we're doing another author's behaving me badly. Today's author is Matt Shaw, a self-published author of extreme horror books. You may have heard with, um, <laughs> oh man, I don't, where do I even start? You might have heard about Matt Shaw recently. I'm here to give you the rundown of what happened and this is going to be long. I'll try to clear up the misconceptions that I saw going around. I wasn't going to do this video because a few months ago when I talked about a misogynistic man who gets a little angry on the internet, I got a really interesting message that scared the shit out of me from somebody telling me that I deserved to die, literally. And I got so freaked out I had to buy a little bottle of pink pepper spray <laughs> so I could feel safe leaving my home and taking my kids places. <laughs> Which, you know, it probably shouldn't be like that. But then I saw that uh, with Cindy did a video on this. So I thought that if Cindy was able to do it and not get any of those rather questionable messages, then I should be okay. I did reach out to her and she said, no, none of those so far. She said she'd update me and so far nothing. So I should be safe. So I know that a few of you had asked me in comments to cover this and now that somebody else who's larger on the internet than me did it, I feel like I should be okay. So here it is, the video you asked for, uh, five or so of you, all behaving badly on Matt Shaw. Now my computer's being a misogynist. I'm just kidding, it's not how that works. It's a joke. Matt Shaw is a popular self-published author in the niche extreme horror community online and he has a substantial enough following. So we're going to discuss what happened, but once again, <laughs> mostly this is a video so that I can talk about misogyny. So I recently did a video talking about implicit misogyny. Now I'm going to talk about explicit misogyny using this as a case example. So there's an ongoing trend of men in general, but also online men authors engaging in behavior in the bookish community that is so out of pocket. I, I don't, I, why? Not every man can be my husband, obviously. Right now he's downstairs hanging shelves after he has spent time looking up how to create salmon lox bagels because he knows that that's my favorite. And this morning I woke up and my first inclination was to go pick him up. Thing of takeout with eggs benedict on a croissant because I know that that's his favorite. So like this is what it looks like when you live in symbiosis between men and women. <laughs> what occurred uh, that I'm going to recount for you is what happens when you don't. I know not every guy can be my husband. We love Carlos here but my god I wish that they would try. They could start by grabbing themselves a copy of The Will to Change by Bell Hooks. I'm just saying. So Matt Shaw is the author of a shit ton of extreme horror books that are very short. Some of his titles include Roe v. Wade, Monster, Sick Bastards, Sicker Bastards, Horror, Porn, The Holy Fucking Bible, and one we're going to mention today called Moist Gusset, which should be a crime. Moist Gusset he wrote in direct response to and then dedicated to a booktuber named Haley, who he does not like and who he has been talking about in really uncomfortable ways, at least to me, for months. But as it would turn out, this is not even the first <laughs> or second woman that Matt has become so angered by that he wrote books in response to. What a fascinating yet alarming behavioral pattern, hmm? A booktuber named Haley was made aware that Matt had been posting about her after she recently discussed the pros and cons of the extreme horror community with her friend. Both of them felt like there were pros and cons and they each, they, they filmed like four hours of material and they broke it up into two videos. Haley's channel did the cons, Astrid's channel they did the pros. Okay. Both of them, and I cannot stress this, uh, stress this enough, read and enjoy extreme horror. In the summer of 2022, this actually has like a long history because that's just like the recent straw that broke the camel's back. In the summer of 2022, Haley had been reading the genre of extreme horror for about a year. Okay. And she gave some not super low, but lower ratings to some popular extreme horror books. Then in September of 2022, she was told that there were authors who she gave lower reviews to their books. Um, talking shit about her in Facebook groups and Twitter and in group chats, which if you're gonna talk shit, keep it in the group chat. Why would you take it to Twitter? Why would you put it on Facebook? Why would you do such a thing? Are you stupid? So her finding out about this, she's like, they're ridiculous, they need to get a life. It's once again worth pointing out that this could have been completely avoided if the author simply would not read their negative reviews or if they're going to, why can't you just keep it in your group chat? Then December in 2022, she talks about her worst books of the year. She posts the video, it's fine. We all do this. Like most of us in the booktube community talk about like our favorites and least favorites of the year. In March of 2023, something happens that Haley did not know about until last month. In March of 2023, Matt Shaw published a book called Moist Gusset that he dedicated to Haley and wrote because of Haley.
Haley. Up to this point and continuing on until August, Matt and Haley never had an interaction. He dedicated a book to a reviewer who had never spoken to him. Turns out wasn't the first time. I'll come back to that. And up to this point, she's only reviewed one of his books semi-negatively. I think she maybe gave it a two and a half, maybe a two. My worst book of the year. Drum roll, please. Roll the dice by Matcha. Talk about lazy. This is not only the offensive that I was talking about, not only the poorly written that I was talking about with other books, not only lazy, but on top of it all, it made no fucking sense. It felt like a 11 year old boy learned that he could be turned on and then just started writing a book that made no sense because he read a few of those like choose your own adventure books and wanted to be like that. <laughs> Basically, this book is about a guy who lives his life based on a dice roll. He carries around dice all the time and he rolls them and that's how he makes decisions. So it'll be like, oh, if I roll a one through four, I'm gonna kill myself today. If I roll a five or six, I'll stay alive. And like, that is literally how he lives his life. Very interesting concept. Would have loved to read a book that was written well with that plot idea, but alas, this was not it. Uh, there was also an interactive element, which is what caused me to order the physical book and like spend 15 of my hard earned dollars on this book because I wanted to read it. I wanted to roll my little dice. I wanted to play along. Like this is basically an adult choose your own adventure book where every time this man has to make a decision with his dice, you make the decision, you roll your dice and then it will be like, okay, if you got a four, flip to page blah 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 and then pick up there and you're basically trying to get through the story without the character dying. Genuinely the first and second time around that I read the book then I just kept getting into a loop where I was reading the same thing where I was like okay I'm just gonna read through all the different alternate endings and try to get this character to survive. Even reading through every single one there was not one plot. It all made sense and it was interesting. Every single option for the death was just like no description, no gore almost at all whatsoever, and just a lot of like weird sexual themes. I guess if you want to read like some weird horror guy, i.e. Matt Shaw's like weird sexual fantasies that include death, I guess read this book. But if that doesn't sound appealing to you, you can totally skip it. It was so odd. There is bestiality in this book that I, listen, I read some dark shit but whenever i read harm to animals it's always like some fucked up serial killer that's like manipulating animals in some way like it's giving jeffrey dahmer vibes and it's like this person is a really bad person that's kind of how it's skewed but when the book has a character have sex with their pet and it's framed as like a funny off the cuff thing that is just so unimaginable to me like it's not even the darkness that gets me it's just like oh this came from a man's brain and he thought it would be like good and quirky and funny in the summer of 2023 Haley starts to feel sort of concerned about the way that the extreme horror community operates in that she feels like there's a lot of misogyny particularly in the context of the books in june 2023 matt shaw published a book called hub which he called extreme horror Haley argues that it is just child sexual assault some of her mutuals read it and like it and she doesn't feel like she can talk about it because she's gonna get backlash and then aspen oh i called aspen astrid didn't i sorry aspen july of 2023 her and Aspen are talking the one that she had the conversation about pros and cons of the extreme horror community and Aspen tells Haley that she had a really bad reading experience with Hub and this really does not sit well with Haley. To give you some context Haley is not just a booktuber she's also a mental health professional. Later in July Haley gets an arc of an extreme horror book written by a mutual of hers. She sees that all the other reviews are five stars unfortunately Haley didn't like this book but Haley is dedicated she says to making honest reviews which great I hope that all of us maintain that here in the book community so she puts up her review it's a two-star review and she says that after this she felt like she was basically immediately excommunicated from the extreme horror community despite the fact that she claims that she has dms from people who felt that they could not be honest about their reviews of that book so because of this she feels like there's some issues going on in the community not just with misogyny in the books not just with child sexual assault in the book that feels like 
gratuitous and meant to be titillating, which is... Mm -mm. But she also feels like there's an issue in the extreme horror community where it's so tight-knit and so niche and also does not play by the rules that we've tried to establish in the book community where it's like authors need to stay out of reviews and also the fans of certain authors need to not send authors their negative reviews. What the fuck are y'all doing? So in August of 2023, Haley and Aspen decide to make these videos where they talk about the pros and cons in the extreme horror community that they are a part of and they like to be a part of, but it's okay to critique the things that you love. She puts up the video on August 18th. She says it got mostly 75% positive feedback. There were some dissenting opinions. That's fine. That's to be expected. It's the nature of online discourse. Then the next day, the extreme horror community is in a kerfuffle. Haley's suddenly getting a shit ton of negative comments on that video. Some folks that she says she was friends with, she now says has blocked her and she feels blindsided, does not understand what happened from the 18th to the 19th. So she finds out that there are extreme horror community Facebook groups where there are discussions about Haley's video being had. Not just readers, but very popular authors in this very niche community. And Haley is reading these posts and is sketched out because Matt Shaw, an author who she's read from before, is commenting, talking about her in a way that suggests that he knows her and that they have some sort of like ongoing spat, which never happened. Haley never talked to him. She had reviewed his book month prior, which she gave, I want to say two and a half, but she mentioned that the premise felt like it, it didn't go the way that the synopsis said it would go. That's all that happened regarding anything to do with Haley and Matt Shaw. But in this Facebook group, she sees that Matt says he dedicated a book to her. So she looks up this book that he recently wrote called Moist Gusset and published in March. I cannot stress enough, she never spoke to this man. She didn't like his book. She discussed men writing women. This is the thing. And this is the thing that applies to all of these five books in this last category is I hate nothing more than when I can hear an author's thoughts in real time and it removes me from enjoying the fictional plot of a book. I have never run into this more than in the extreme horror genre. I do love the genre. I have read so many books that I have loved, 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 favorites of all time that write their female characters beautifully, don't offend anyone in like a racist or homophobic or transphobic kind of way, but still serve me all of the gore, delicious viscera, horrible depraved acts, and all of that that I love. When I have an issue is when these authors obviously aren't doing their due diligence to seem like they care about their female LGBT or people of color readers. Obviously, I'm not a person of color, so I cannot make that judgment on if someone of color would be comfortable reading any of these books. Look at reviews of people of color, please. Don't take my opinion on that, although I will continue to call out when an extreme horror author who is white puts the n-word in their book because that can trigger racial trauma. So it's not even about being offensive, even though that's a layer of it, but apparently it's it's problematic for me to call that out. Um, no, I will continue to call that out because it will trigger racial trauma. I'm a trauma therapist. I'm aware of these things. I'm not going to have some unsuspecting person flipping through a book and read a word said by a white author who might trigger racial trauma in that person when they're trying to escape into a horror book. At least that's why I read horror books and I wouldn't want to be triggered in that way. So yes, I will continue to give that trigger warning. But for all other issues of non-white people please go take in other people's reviews of these extreme horror books but as for lgbtq people and as for women i can speak on this and say these authors do not consider us they don't care if we read their books because they don't care about us as people at least that is the vibe that i get when i read these characters who are written so horribly and things that are so offensive in such a careless way Okay, if you're trying to say this is the offensive nature of extreme horror, it's just not true because it was so unintentional. If you put intention into your book to make it offensive because it's extreme horror and you want it to be extremely offensive, that's one thing. This is not that. If you're looking for that, look to something like No One Writes for Free by Judith Sonnet. But as for these male authors, it's just a, it's a theme. Okay, it's about track record. It seems to be an issue across all these people consistently. So that is why they are the worst books of 2022.
that I've read so far. I will continue to speak on this. If you don't like hearing me talk about it, please unsubscribe. I don't need you here. Okay, I like my community being full of people who can either agree with me or disagree with me nicely. And uh, this is my channel where I literally film myself giving my opinions. So I'm not going to stop giving my opinions on this shit. And he thought that it was a reasonable response to when hearing a, a woman say, men aren't writing women very well, maybe they shouldn't do that, to write a book saying, yes, I can, and dedicate that book to a reviewer. And also it looks an awful lot like he used AI to make the cover art for this. Okay, so the dedication was not just to Haley, right? It says, Haley, you hate it when men write through the eyes of a woman so much, and yet you inspired me to write this book, which I am sure you will never read, and that's fine. That being said, I am surprised how much time you spend moaning about male authors misrepresenting people and groups when you could spend the time enjoying the things that don't upset your delicate sensitivities. Art can be enjoyed by anyone. Art can be created by anyone. Only Nazis dictate otherwise, you trout. What is it with men? thinking that people not liking their books and saying maybe you should think about the way that you write things, saying that their books are being treated the way that Nazis treated books. What is that? What is that? Why? Where are your brain cells? So Haley talked about what was going on over on Instagram and then also went to Goodreads to the book and reviewed it. This is one of the very few cases in which I would say that writing a one-star review of a book you haven't read is exactly the route that I would have taken and I never say that. Like you can do whatever you want. I don't one star books that I haven't read, but if this were me, yeah, I would have given it one star too. He didn't just dedicate a book to her and say for Haley. He wrote this entire thing where he was overtly misogynistic, talking about delicate sensitivities, called her a trout, which is like a misogynistic British term, and likened her to a Nazi. What is it with men? And whenever they get negative feedback regarding their books, they start talking about their books as if they are being treated the way that Nazis treated books. What is that about? So she goes to Goodreads, one stars the book. She did not read the book, so she doesn't know this, but it was not torture porn. She assumed that it was an extreme horror book and it was not, but it's safe to assume that considering his other books. So either way though, I probably wouldn't want to crack open a book uh, that was dedicated to me in which somebody called me a trout and likened me to a Nazi either. I feel like the misunderstanding portion of this um, um, is so minuscule in comparison to the, you know, part where she got likened to a Nazi and got watched on her platform for months. I don't feel like the, I, I just don't feel like that's evenly matched, in my opinion. Matt's gonna pull a Darvo though, just wait. Matt sees that she one stars his review. A what? One stars his book. And this is either because he is constantly watching his reviews, which he shouldn't be doing, or it was sent to him by some shit stirring asshole piece of shit. In in which case, let me let me tell you something. I am like a, you know, person who gets a lot of views, a lot of eyes on me now, which is a really weird place to be because I never thought that I would be here. And I get st sent stuff too. And I don't want to see it. I've said in my Discord, I don't want to see it. I've had to erase comments of people telling me that I showed up somewhere. I don't want to know. So I erase it so that I don't know and I can't like think about it anymore. I don't want to know. There are spaces of the internet that aren't for me that are going to get all kinds of, of elbows deep into to fucking hating me and that's their right. I don't want to know about it. Please don't send it to me. It will make me sad. I don't want to know. And that's it. Other people's thoughts of me are not my business unless they leave it in my comment section. Matt needs to employ the same tactic. Matt needs to do that because he should never have been getting sent that stuff. I don't know what kind of person would think that it's appropriate to see a negative review and think I should send this to the author. What did you think was going to happen? What do you want to happen is a better question. And why? Maybe unpack that in therapy. He should have made a rule. I put it in my discord. I'm saying it here. He needed to say publicly that same thing. Don't send me that stuff. Don't send it. I don't want to see it. It's not for me. It's not for my eyes. I was never meant to see it. Don't do that. You're just shit stirring. You are helping nobody. Other people are entitled to their opinions of me. Don't send it to me. That's what Matt Shaw should have said. That's the, that's what he should have employed. Please don't send it to me and end it at that. Don't go looking. What is that achieve? But also if you're not going uh, and getting that stuff and sending it to somebody, that means that he's actively looking and that is worse. Please don't 
don't monitor your reviews, especially your negative ones. Anywho, he decides to argue with Haley. Her review said, apparently this book is about me according to the author's comments on Facebook. Nice to know I can bring valid criticism to everything I've read from him and rather than taking a step back, separating himself from his art and understanding that it's my job as a reviewer to give honest reviews, he writes a book about me. I really live in his mind rent free. If it's not using me for clout, it's child porn though, right? I guess it's the lesser evil. Now I have to stop here and tell you that this book is not child porn and this book is not revenge porn. There was some misconceptions, which I mean, can we really blame Haley? Did she really want to open a fucking book considering, you know, what his previous books are? Probably not. I wouldn't have wanted to either. This book is not about torture, though some of his other books are. He did write torture porn, but he did not write torture porn about Haley. There is a torture porn book that he wrote about a real life woman though. And just like Scarlett Johansson won a lawsuit against a man who did this to her, if the real life woman who Matt Shaw wrote about was to find out about his book, she'd probably win a lawsuit too. The book is called Her Name It Was Amber, which is a revenge torture porn book about Amber Heard. From Matt Shaw, the author of Sick Bastards, The Octopus Trilogy, and Below Deck comes a new extreme horror about love and revenge. When Amber met him, she was a struggling artist on the bottom rung of the ladder. He was at the top of his game and adored by millions. In an ill-advised relationship, Amber used him to further her own career and popularity. When she had gotten all she could from him, she chewed him up and spat him out. Hello, I've returned. I did in fact have to stop filming this video and come back to it. Before I start, I have to say a few things. First, happy Band Books Week. Band Books Week runs from October 1st to October 7th. Please support content creators. What? Please support... <laughs> content creators, please support Banned Books Week. Please promote Banned Books Week. Uh, there may be events going on in your area and that's great if you can go, but you do not have to go anywhere to do Banned Books Week. You can do it online. Gather your friends, do reading sprints, uh, read a banned book. You can read a children's banned book. And Tango Makes Three is one that I have somewhere on the floor in this disaster of a bedroom where all my children's books are. And All Are Welcome Here is another one that I have somewhere. Read, promote banned books, promote authors whose books have been banned, support authors who are working against books, book banning and boost other content creators who are talking about book banning like Ashley from Bookish Realm, Carmen from Tomes and Textiles who actually put together, Carmen and I both live in Tampa and she put together uh, an event that I'm going to be reading at. I'm going to be reading from All, All Boys Aren't Blue at Shuffle in Tampa on October 5th. So if you're in the Tampa area and want to come to a banned books event, that's happening. So please support Banned Books Week October 1st through October 7th. Okay, okay, okay. Oh man, I am so behind on work. Last week, just got away from me. Uh. Amber told all who would listen how she lived in fear of him. She revealed how he regularly beat her and pushed her around. Her imagination had no limits when it came to the lies she'd spit forward. While some people refused to believe her, others sided with her and turned their back on the man they once loved. But from all those who heard her, one man decided to step forward and show her what it was really lived like to live in fear from someone. So Matt Shaw is in fact a rather big Johnny Depp supporter. Um, he has a video somewhere where he says Amber deserved it which woof. Now we're not having the debate in my comments on whether or not Amber Heard is a liar and Johnny Depp is a victim. We're not doing that. That's not what my comment section is for. I don't want to talk about it. I don't have an opinion anymore one way or another on that entire trial. I did while I was watching it um, and then I stopped abruptly because the only thing that we really need to discuss about in relation to that in this video is the way that men talk about Amber Heard as if they feel vindicated by that trial and that's exactly why I stopped watching and having an opinion either way. Once I realized that alarming trend, I had no interest either way who was guilty, who was innocent, I don't care. To write torture porn about anybody is too far and you can say on the back of the book this any relation to persons real or imagined is a coincidence but is it? I don't care who it is. Nobody should have torture porn written about them. There are too many men now who are absolutely obsessed with the idea that Amber Heard was a known name actress who took advantage of Johnny Depp so that she could further her career and then chewed him up and spat him out. Men are obsessed with the idea that women secretly do this and to have revenge fantasies written about her is so fucking scary to me. But this isn't just creepy, it's relative to Haley, the reviewer in question, um, because although Matt Shaw never wrote torture porn about Haley, that was a uh, a misunderstanding. He did call her Amber, who he wrote torture porn about. He referred to a woman who he does not like, Haley, as Amber, a woman he wrote torture porn about. A revenge porn torture porn book about. And again, he also has his super cute little boy boss video where he says Amber Heard deserved it. So sure, that's not concerning. 
And real quick, actually, before I continue, I don't think I did this when I previously filmed this, so let's address it now. I want to address the people who are inevitably here in bad faith, as you all do tend to show up whenever I talk about misogynistic men. Um, I want to say that after I, actually, after I had filmed the last part of this video, the original part of this video, I found out from my friend D that although Cindy, who did a video on Matt Shot, never got any death threats, my friend D, who is a smaller uh, channel who did a video on this uh, Matt Shot incident, he had to turn off comments because he had a bunch of no brain bitches, as my friend Neeks would call them, show up and one of these dumb fucks called D the N word. Which first of all, fuck you. And second of all, you proved Haley's point. You proved her right. You proved that there is something rotten in every genre. In every genre, there is a rotten author and a rotten communal attitude around certain authors. And Matt Shaw is that rotten part of the splatterpunk genre. And you all who walk around sending death threats and calling people slurs are proof of that. You proved Haley's point right. You all went out of your fucking way to prove the point that she made. Friendly piece of advice, and by friendly I mean fuck you. If somebody calls you out, either <laughs> you or a public figure that you align yourself with for something like, I don't know, say racism, sexism, try not to go out of your fucking way to prove that person right and therefore making you and the person you're going to bat for look like a fucking idiot. A racist fucking idiot at that. Oh, actually, I'm not done making fun of those people because come to find out they also called D a pick me. <laughs> I love the amount of men running around lately that use the term pick me and use it wrong. What you actually meant to say was white knight, which is, in my opinion, rooted in sexism. The way that y'all use it at least, maybe not originally, but now the way that y'all weaponize it is sexist. <laughs> What's so fucking ironic is that <laughs> the irony, which I'm sure is lost on these no brain having bitches, is that they really think that somebody pointing out misogyny is white knighting and somehow pathetic. But what's pathetic is <laughs> saying things like, she's not gonna pick you <laughs> to a person who's standing up against misogyny, which like, yeah, no shit. Of course she's not going to pick somebody who's doing the bare minimum. Pointing out misogyny is the bare minimum and the bare minimum is not the metric by which we choose our men, but it is the metric, ironically, that y'all wish we would choose our men by. And that is the reason why y'all get mad when women don't choose you and continue the cycle of misogyny that got you in that fucking conversation in the fucking first place. All I have to say, anything racist and misogynistic and fat phobic inevitably because I'm fat so I shouldn't have an opinion on the internet. Anything that they leave here is just going to continue proving Haley's point correct. <laughs> It's so fucking predictable, I would weep for them if I wasn't so busy laughing at them. Let me also explain why this video is so long, because I know some people are inevitably here in bad faith, as usual, thanks for the ad revenue, and they, they come to my channel and they're like, why do you spend so much time talking about these people if you hate them so much? Which like, how do you want me to respond to that exactly? You would have to say that I'm obsessed with every single author I talk about then, right? There are authors I'm obsessed with, uh, Alison Saff for example, but in like a good way. <laughs> So when authors do something that makes people upset, I like to do videos on it because I think it's a good opportunity to have a discussion. It's normally a good opportunity to use this situation as a jumping off point to talk about a topic that I'm particularly interested in, like misogyny. But further, people just like to hear about what's happening and they use that information to inform their uh, reading or purchase decisions. Sometimes people come here and they're like, oh, that's shitty. I'm not going to read from that author. And sometimes people go, oh, that's shitty. I like shitty people. I am gonna read from that author. I will say that typically people do that when it's a man. <laughs> Proving my point once again. The reason I have an audience is because people like to hear about that stuff and like to be in conversation about such things. So I do these uh, because I'm interested in the topics, um, particularly the topic of misogyny I'm interested in. Are you kidding me? Hello? Hi. Oh my gosh. My kid is sick, so I have to stop filming again. <laughs> awesome. Hello, it's me. I'm gonna have to film like this now for today because my youngest is homesick. I thought very strongly that my youngest was faking sick 
bike at school to try to come home and ride their roller skates. They were not faking. Um, they are now on the couch with a fever. They have Tylenol, they have Blippi, they have water and snacks. So um, I cannot go upstairs and film. So this is how we're filming today. Okay, where was I? I do these videos because I am interested particularly in the cop in the conversation of misogyny, using these as a, a, a way to have a conversation about implicit and explicit misogyny. I recently did a video on Nate Lemke, and that was a really good opportunity for us to talk about what it looks like when somebody is implicitly being misogynist. Matt Shaw is explicitly being a misogynist, in my opinion, as a woman. Now we're going to use him as a, as a jumping off point to talk about that in this video. On the flip side, people who are inevitably here in bad faith are neither interested nor in that conversation, nor are they interested in uh, being in a community at all in which we talk about how to identify and combat misogyny. So my question is like, why be here? They, you're inevitably here. Like, why be here? I know why I'm here because it's important to have these discussions and that's the community that I have built. I don't know why people who hate having these discussions waste their time coming and commenting, uh, especially when they waste their time going to these videos about people like this, um, about Matt Shaw and commenting slurs and fat phobia and more misogyny, just proving the point that Haley initially made. Like why show up here and listen to me talk for two hours if you just hate my guts? <laughs> You'd never see me wasting my time like that. Um, going to a video talking about how much somebody hates, I don't know, what do I love? Bagels. And and listening to them talk about how much they hate bagels for two hours. I would I would not waste my time doing that. Or like Taylor Swift or Sleep Token. Why would, why would I do that? Why would I do that to myself? Because that's not a community that I want to be in and I don't want to listen to somebody drone on for hours and hours and hours about that topic because it would make me upset. So likewise, maybe don't be here if that's you with Matt Shaw. So now that I've spoken to those five to seven people directly with nary a brain cell in sight, let's get back into the video. Let me get back into his Goodreads comments and then we'll come back to the Amber Heard thing. In his Goodreads comments, let me see if I can pull this up for you. So in his Goodreads comment here, he says, oh, Haley, you have talked about your job being to give honest reviews, but this is clearly not that. You haven't read the book as made evident by your Instagram post I was just sent. Again, Matt Shaw really needs to make the rule with his audience. Don't send things to me if it's about me and the person is not talking to me. I don't want to, I don't need to know that shit. You know, the one in which you state I have written, written torture porn about you. Had you read this book, you'd have seen it's very tongue in cheek romance. And funnily enough, there are no characters based on you in the book. So yeah, I haven't written a book about you. Sorry to disappoint. That being said, this book is dedicated to you because I was sent a video you did on YouTube in which you state white men cannot write female characters. I just want to point out, this is a thing that misogynists do where they say men, when they're talking about men, but when they're talking about women, they call them females. I don't like that. White men cannot, and I know that one is a noun and like one is an adjective. I get it. I just think that if you can say female when you mean women, just say women. Why aren't you saying women when you say men? Just say women because then we don't exclude the trans community um, and also we don't boil down people to just their sex. I just don't feel comfortable with that. And I've noticed that that's a trend among misogynists. I was curious, so I thought, I bet we bloody can, so I gave it a go. And you know what? You were entirely right. We cannot write female characters women because I really did suck at it but you know what I had a great deal of fun in trying okay um like cool you <laughs> you didn't need to involve Haley in that though you know what I mean as for living in my mind rent free I'm afraid not I get sent your videos because you have a knack of upsetting readers within the extreme horror genre and keep mentioning my name along with others just as such as John Athan and Duncan Ralston incidentally one of their books you decided to talk about in the video you got the plot entirely wrong so I'm not sure if you read the video or got it confused with another but it doesn't help with the honest review stance you take why is he yelling all that being said you have an open invitation to come and have a real discussion with me on my podcast anytime you would like about the genre. Oh my god, every man who does this is such a as a whole and the readers who enjoy it and dislike it. For a discussion to be had and improvements to be made so people can feel safe, you need to talk with people from both sides of the fence. That is where it becomes interesting. So yes, open invitation and you can reach out to me anytime you wish. Take care, hugs and squishes. Um, I would rather die than receive a hug or a squish from a man like this. And then a woman said, God, I wish I, assumedly a woman said, God, I wish I could like Matt's comment. The women who came to bat for Matt Shaw doing uh, the internalized misogyny so boldly and so loudly was uncomfortable to witness, certainly. Haley responded saying, no, I have not read the book, but I wrote this review to get your attention because apparently one star reviews are the only thing you engage with. And two, as someone who does not take kindly to inspiring your vitriol, leave me out of it. I have never read anything by John Athan that I have not enjoyed. I've given all of his books above four stars. I recommend all of his books on my channel and I'm a massive fan of the way he imbues empathy in every page of his work that I have read, the stuff that I haven't read yet, I can't speak to. As for Mr. Duncan, ha, he sucks. It's my opinion, I get to have it. Which 
plot are you referring to? Please send me the video in question because I do in fact read every book that I review on my channel. If I mistake made a mistake about a plot, it was probably in a haul or a TBR video, which I filmed before I read the books because you know, you feature books in there which you plan on reading. If that is actually what happened, that is genuinely fucking hilarious. I don't feel the need to fact check whether <laughs> it was that she accidentally got a plot wrong or that she was just talking about a plot and said it wrong because she had not read the book yet and was planning to because it was a haul or a TBR video, which I think we all have done. If that's true, like it's kind of a moot point, isn't it? Because why is he watching her so much that he has that degree of information on her? And you can say like, oh, he was sent it. You should not be getting sent that much information on somebody who is reading your books. Like you should have a line between you and your readers. Your fan base should know that. You should not have made a culture of your internet life in which your fan base felt comfortable repeatedly sending you stuff about a woman until you dedicated a book to her. That's that's uh, that's uncomfortable <laughs> at a minimum. Finally, I don't feel comfortable talking to you on a podcast after seeing the words you have spoken about me behind private groups. It's disgusting. I mean, yeah, referring to her as Amber after he has written torture revenge porn about Amber Heard, I, would, I wouldn't want to go on a podcast with him either. That would feel unsafe to me as well. I'll stick to the extreme horror authors that don't give me the ick, but that definitely doesn't mean I'll stop advocating for the things I believe in. So please rest assured, you'll be probably hearing about me. I won't be silenced by any man. Pip, pip, cheerio. <laughs> At what point have I tried to silence you? I can provide plenty of screenshots where I, I have said that yes, you are entitled to your opinion. If that's going to be my work sucks or any author, then that isn't a problem. Even here, I'm trying to engage in conversation with you about the genre, but it's you who is declining. Why? Because I'm a man and I have a different opinion to yourself? Yet earlier today, you accused somebody of speaking in an echo chamber. So a little double standards because that's exactly what you do, but I offered and you declined, so not a problem. A coward's way out though. After what you said about me in private groups, the groups I'm a part of can be joined by anyone. They're not private. You just have to actively click on them like the person who sent you the screenshots you've been quoting on your Instagram stories has or like you have and you chose to remain anonymous. As for my comments, they're my opinion and like you, I'm a loud one and I stand by it. I don't think your videos carry any merit and you're more about negativity than positivity within the community. His repeated attempts to discredit her when that's a moot point considering he's been watching her for months. I just want to point out how hilarious that is. You mentioned before about how you thought you found your people but you realized you were wrong because of how people attack you but from what I've seen that's not the case. These people are responding to comments you have made as you're very aware you don't just give an opinion about a book but you go out of your way to insult the author too with your name calling antics but again here you are trying to be the victim. I genuinely think you need some kind of help and I hope you find it. Oh for god's sake disingenuous bullshit. With regards to the community about leaving a fake review to my get my attention okay that makes sense entirely. I mean it's not like my whatsapp number is on my page my email address is easily available and multiple social media platforms I can be reached. Your way of reaching out is to leave fake reviews. That's good for people to know. So when I go talk to my school board, right? When my school board fucks up because my school board has stupid religious people on it that make stupid decisions. Fuck you, Patty Rendon and Stacey Hahn. I go tell them that publicly <laughs> because there is an element of accountability there. I'm speaking to them, but I'm doing it publicly because everybody else needs to know as well because they are doing something that I feel people need to know about for safety reasons. And I think, I would assume that Haley felt the same way. I don't want to contact Stacey Hahn and Patty Rendon just by email and let them know when they have fucked up because then other people don't get the chance to know that and make their decisions accordingly. Now, I'm glad for other readers that <laughs> Haley pointed this out on Goodreads because that means that other readers can know, oh shit, if I say something negative about this author's books, he might dedicate his next book to me. That's uncomfortable. I would like to avoid that, please. So, I mean, it makes sense to me, but okay, sure. I guess we'll just, you know, continue to be disingenuous. What is rather weird is how you dictate to others what they should and shouldn't read. I will come back to that point later. And if they don't agree with you, you tell them to take a good look at themselves because it speaks volumes to the type of person they are. You also run books down without reading them just because of the author. So that's not exactly an honest review. That's not even true. <laughs> it's your opinion, sure, but it's not an honest review. So don't pretend otherwise. This is virtue signaling. Anyway, clearly this is pointless, but I stand by my comments. The moment you're ready to have an actual conversation about extreme horror in the state, a bit my door is open or you can just leave another fake review to get my attention i probably won't keep hearing about you though the more you push the community way take care love i'll always stand up for what i believe in but i also will only interact with you on public forums exactly because let's be honest you do scare me it's for my safety it's not a coward's way out it's the natural fear that comes from being a woman in the world so especially a woman who has been ruthlessly attacked by yourself and your little posse you wouldn't understand that though as i've established please don't try to take the moral high ground in regards to name calling if you're going to be upset about your <laughs> me saying your books give incel 
Israel, then I bring out all the screenshots of the name calling of me that's going on over by on Facebook by yourself and others. I've never given a, fa given a fake review. This is the sole book that I have ever commented on that I have never read because I was disturbed with the way you spoke about myself and this book in the same sentence. I don't think people should read something solely fueled by your anger at negative reviews. When you write books, you open yourself up to criticism. I don't like your books and I think your films are even worse. Yes, he does make films. We're just going to move on. Again, I'm entitled to my opinion. Please do follow up on the one question that you didn't answer. What plot did I get wrong? I would genuinely like to amend that to make sure I don't spread false info. And I would have genuinely liked an honest, open conversation with you about the horror genre. But seeing as you're camping and try to get rid of the dangerous authors, predators being another name you use, but oh well, you can go and find the plot yourself, I'm sure. And I'm going back to my actual writing work now to ensure the content can keep coming to you, give you something to moan about. But thank you for supporting my work, even though you're hate of it. I appreciate the time. I do want to point out that she did in fact support his work. She bought his book. She bought it, a physical copy of it, so that she could read it because she was interested in the synopsis because she is in fact a reader of extreme horror. Okay. Scary author who's repeatedly tried to extend an olive branch for an adult conversation signing off. I won't be reading any further comments here. Finally. Okay. So then Matt talks about Haley in a couple of TikToks, which I shall play for you. So I was uh, recording this video a minute ago and I'm about to start again because I had to go and sort something out. Basically, I've got a fish tank next to me and I was talking about a YouTuber who we're about to talk about now. And the fish was like, oh, not this crazy woman again. I've had enough of this. And it just upturned and died. Like it, it doesn't want to hear about her anymore. To such an extent, it just stopped living. Um, but anyway, I, I hooked him out of the fish tank and, uh, well, I'll fry him up later. That's a bit of dinner. Go with my chips. That's, um, fries for the Americans out there. Anyway, the purpose of this video is we're going to be talking about a YouTuber who has once again made another twatish video. Um, and then she complains that, oh, people come after me because she makes these videos and she's surprised that there's negative reaction to it. But anyway, her and this other person, I've got no idea who they are. They wanted to have a conversation about extreme horror. Fair enough. They wanted to know why people like it, uh, recommend certain books that they do like, tell people who they should and shouldn't read, um, moan about book talk, saying that book talk is actually helping extreme horror get into um, proper brick and mortar stores, um, which is great on one hand, but on the other hand, you know, it is potentially putting these books in line with children who shouldn't be reading such content. Um, they they raise some some valid points, you know, uh, and yeah, there is discussion to be had there, but they go about it. Or rather, this particular person does. The other one is less offensive. This particular person goes against, uh, goes, she basically goes goes to have the discussion in all the wrong ways. So she raises some valid points and you're like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But then she starts attacking everyone. Um, you know, oh my God, extreme horror authors, the guys who write this, they're just misogynistic. Actually, I think you'll find that a lot of the extreme horror authors are some of the nicest guys you could actually hope to meet. Yes, there are some who are problematic. Um, you know, only a couple of years ago, one such writer was sending videos of himself uh, to unsuspecting women. And he was naked and basically doing things that they didn't want to be seeing. So, you know, there are problematic people out there, but that goes in all walks of life. You can't just take this example of th this person and tar everyone else with the same brush. But it seems like she does. She reads the books, instantly thinks that we're misogynistic. Or she says she reads the books because she did actually try and describe one book um, by John Athen. And what she described was not the book. So uh, clearly she hasn't read it. And it just makes you wonder, does she actually read these books properly? Or does she just pretend to read them just so she can slag them off? Personally, I think it's the latter. Um, but yeah, my biggest problem with, with this person and such discussions is the lack of acceptance. You know, she's very much, this is my opinion. And I can already hear people coming onto the comments section to defend, you know, why they like such and such and blah, blah, blah. It's gross. I've heard it all before. I've seen it so many times. They're having a discussion, love. You're basically saying, how can people like this? And the people that like it are then going, well, I like it because blah, blah, blah. But you don't want to hear that because you've already judged them. In your last video, the latest one, you literally say if you have no triggers, if there are no hard limits to what you do not want to read, stop, take a good look at yourself and ask what kind of person you are. So you're basically attacking the readers now as well. Interesting business practice, given the fact that you keep talking about this horror book you're writing. So you're alienating all of the authors, but you're also 
alienating readers now as well. That's just stupid. Art is subjective. We can like what we want to like. We can write what we want to write. And we put warnings on the books. Like you talk about Hub, a book that I have not released to the mainstream. It's only available on my Etsy store or my Big Cartel store or through the campaign, the very successful campaign I, I hasten to add. And now part one, part two and part three are done. But you talk about it like it's disgusting, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, it's disgusting. It says so in the notes at the front of the book. But there's also trigger warnings on the book going, you know, avoid this book if this isn't your kind of reading material. So clearly it's not your kind of reading material. So why read it? That goes for anyone. If, if you don't like extreme horror why read it? There's lots of genres out there. There's lots of subgenres within horror that you can read and that you will probably enjoy. But to come into the extreme horror market and moan about it, fair enough, you're entitled to your opinion. That's not an issue. That was never an issue. What's the issue is telling people, other people, how they should feel and what they should read. For example, saying you should not read Duncan Ralston, you should not read Aaron Beauregard, you should not read Matt Shaw, you should not read. By doing this, you're forcing your beliefs on other people. So it's one thing to have an opinion and say, I don't like this book. These are the reasons I do not like it. But then it's up to the individuals who see your video, who see your review, as to whether they want to go and read it. Maybe they're sitting there going, actually, it sounds pretty good. I might enjoy that one, you know, but you're not there doing that. You're basically saying to them, don't support this person. Don't support that person. Don't support these people because they're all evil people because of the content they write. And it's just stupid. That's why people get upset at you. And it's not even like they're upset properly, you know. They just think you're a dick. You know, that's their opinion and they're welcome to it. I know my opinion. Um, and again, I'm welcome to mine just as you are yours. But what I've never done is I've never gone and said, do not look at this person's reviews. Do not go and follow this person's videos. Because while I may disagree with you, others may agree with you and enjoy your content. It's just not for me. But that's the difference between you and me. Yet yeah, I'm the evil person for writing extreme horror. I'm evil. Yet yeah, if I disagree with something you say, I have the mental capacity to step back and go, you know what? I don't care. You don't like my stuff? Not a problem. I'm going to go and carry on doing what I'm doing because, you know, I'm making quite a nice living from it. You, on the other hand, you seem to be so triggered by everything that you seem to think it's okay to tell people what they can and cannot do. And that, to me, is just fucking weird. But at the same time, I'm kind of grateful because, thanks to you, the book Moist Gusset exists. Um, had it not been for you saying what white men should and shouldn't write, I would never have even thought of the idea and never have gone and written it. And again, now it's quite a nice, successful little book. So thanks for that. Um, but yeah, have your opinions, have your reviews, even if they're negative. But don't tell people who they can and cannot support. That is just pathetic. And also telling readers to have a good look at themselves and question the sort of person they are because they like extreme content. It's just bizarre. More so when in the same video, a little bit later on, you say your own mother goes a lot harder than you. Ooh, uh, pass her number on, love. You know, does that mean your mum needs to take a good look at herself and ask the sort of person she she is? Was that a slight dig at your mum? Because that's how it comes across. But anyway, peace, love, happiness and spunk to all. Uh, life is too short for negativity, so just be happy. Be happy. Read what you want to read. Enjoy what you want to enjoy. And don't let anyone else dictate what you should and shouldn't do. Because those are the people that just are not worth your time. The way he discussed all this, setting up his audience to feel like a particular way, was really unsettling. The way he made it out as though these women were like new to the genre, when they're not, they are fans of the genre who have some concerns. And whether or not I agree with any like statements they made is a moot point because again, Matt was watching Haley for at least nine months before this conversation happened. He set it up, he both here in the comments of the video on TikTok and in his Facebook post comments, this inclination to say things along the lines of the typical misogynistic take of, they just don't get it because they're women, which is an implicit misogyny thing that even women do to other women. And we're in fact seeing this with the Haley and uh, dealing with other women being shitty towards her and defending Matt Shaw. So you can see in the comments them saying, they just don't get the genre. They're not really fans of the genre. Fake fan. They just don't get it. If they really loved extreme horror, blah, 
blah, blah, blah, which is easily observed to be untrue if you watch Haley's channel or her friends for that matter, but they're not going to because the point is to discredit. The point is that Haley made a point that they did not like and they want to discredit her in any way possible. It's an ad hominem. That's the intention. And I cannot believe he actually responded to a woman saying, <laughs> these guys are misogynistic. I had a delivery at the door I had to go, <laughs> go take care of. Okay, so I cannot believe he actually responded to a woman saying a lot of the books in this genre that I do love, I'm unfortunately dealing with reading a lot of misogyny in and I'm, I'm struggling with that as a, a lover of the genre. Him saying, well, a lot of the extreme horror community are the nicest guys that you will ever meet. Actually, I think you'll find that a lot of the extreme horror authors are some of the nicest guys you could actually hope to meet. It's 2023. How are men still making such an unintelligent nothing sandwich of an argument in response to misogyny. One, if you're not a woman or another marginalized gender, then I don't think you're going to understand how misogyny really feels, let alone presents. Two, you can be nice and still say and do misogynistic things, okay? Fuck, you can even still be like a woman <laughs> and have internalized misogyny and be misogynistic to another woman. And three, why the absolute fuck would I believe this guy? He has gone after this woman for months. <laughs> why would I take his word on what or whom is misogynistic and what is not? The logic is gone. It has left the building. It shows death, much like the fish that he referenced in the beginning of that TikTok, which I'm totally sure is definitely a real thing. Oh, and four, um, I don't think dudes who write posts like this in their big age in the year 2023, where they make jokes about women being emotional because of periods, actually can identify misogyny at all. I don't think so. Yes, there are some who are problematic. Um, you know, only a couple of years ago, one such writer was sending videos of himself uh, to unsuspecting women and he was naked and basically doing things that they didn't want to be seeing. So, you know, there are problematic people out there, but that goes in all walks of life. What he's describing, instead of seeing misogyny as a spectrum of behavior with implicit and explicit behavior, he sees it as, as long as you go up to, don't go up to this level, I'm not a misogynist, which that's not how it works. It's not like, it's it's a spectrum. It's not like a, like a, like a bad person roller coaster, like a, you must be this shitty to call yourself a misogynist, like, or get called a misogynist. That's, that's not how it works. Him repeating repeatedly talking about how he she got the synopsis wrong for a book despite her telling him that she could not have possibly done that for a book that she had read and she was probably talking about it either in a TBR or a haul is a continuous attempt and a bad one to discredit her as a reviewer <laughs> as a whole. It worked clearly on certain, you know, brain off folks, but it doesn't work on me who actually took the time to scroll through Haley's YouTube channel and her Goodreads account and get a good understanding of how much she likes and dislikes the genre. Trying to create a narrative around this reviewer in an effort to like affect Matt's own feelings about his work as well as others is a move that we have seen before. We saw it with this uh, book's author where the author looked through the Goodreads of a particular reviewer and screenshotted uh, that reviewer's previous reads and made fun of that reviewer for giving uh, certain books five stars and basically insinuating like, of course you didn't like my book because you like these books. Authors, please don't do this. This is a terrible tactic. It's a terrible idea. Stop trying to affect your audience's perception of your book by trashing another reviewer. Stop doing that. Your audience already likes your book. You don't need to fixate on one reviewer and put them down to make your audience feel like your books are good. Like, stop, stop that. It's not a new play. It's stupid. And again, he completely avoids telling his audience here that she did a video discussion with her friend Aspen on, yes, the negatives, but also the positives. They, they did both. And he completely avoids saying that. Assumedly, he avoids that detail on purpose in order to create this very particular narrative around Haley in order to discredit her. Further, it's weird as fuck. He knows knows that much details about Haley's thoughts on other books, or at least <laughs> details he claims are correct, when his disdain for her is so clear. Personally, when I don't like another reviewer to this degree, I ignore them. I'm not an author though, I'm in community with other reviewers, but if we don't like each other, we just ignore each other for the most part. Unless you're doing something like racist, ableist, sexist, if I just think you're annoying, I avoid you. I don't consistently watch their content for almost nine months for no reason and then attempt to discredit them. That's wacky. She reads the books instantly thinks that we're misogynistic or she says she reads the books because she did actually try and describe one book um by john athen 
And what she described was not the book. Does she actually read these books properly or does she pretend to is not a real question that he's asking. He's attempting again to discredit and get his audience to have this opinion about Haley so that more people seek to tell her that she is discredited. It's manipulative, but again, it doesn't work on anybody with two brain cells to rub together. In your last video, the latest one, you literally say if you have no triggers, if there are no hard limits to what you do not want to read, stop, take a good look at yourself and ask what kind of person you are. So you're basically attacking the readers now as well. This is actually a fair point, but the person that should be making it is a fellow reviewer and reader of the specific genre that Haley's talking about, not the guy who seeks at every turn to manipulatively discredit the reviewer in question and call her a fucking trout, liken her to a Nazi and send a shit ton of people her way and has been watching her for months and having people send him information about her for months without telling them to stop because that's a weird boundary violation doesn't stay the fuck out of review spaces and has dedicated two books to two different reviewers who are women he did not like. Because after doing all that, especially the first part, <laughs> this reads like virtue signaling. I don't think Matt actually cares about reviewers discussing such topics. It's just him doing the and another thing as an opportunity to shit on a woman who he's been shitting on for months before she even knew this was happening. And again, he completely avoids telling his audience that she did videos on both the negatives and the positives assumedly again he avoids that detail on purpose clearly it's not your kind of reading material so why read it here he goes again she does like extreme horror, horror. <laughs> seeking to discredit is but to come into the extreme horror market and moan about it Fair enough, you're entitled to your opinion. That's not an issue. That was never an issue. What's the issue is telling people, other people, how they should feel and what they should read. For example, saying you should not read Duncan Ralston. You should not read Aaron Beauregard. You should not read Matt Shaw. You should not read. By doing this, you're forcing your beliefs on other people. So it's one thing to have an opinion and say, I don't like this book. These are the reasons I do not like it. But then it's up to the individuals who see your video, who see your review, as to whether they want to go and read it. Maybe they're sitting there going, actually, it sounds pretty good. I might enjoy that one, you know, but you're not there doing that. You're basically saying to them, don't support this person. Don't support that person. Don't support these people because they're all evil people because of the content they write. And it's just stupid. Can I just say as a person who grew up funny, how much I fucking hate the phrase forcing your beliefs, um, the usage of it where it clearly does not apply. Have we forgotten what the word force actually means? Uh, you shouldn't is an opinion. It's a recommendation. Uh, recommending things is not prescriptive and recommending recommending things does not imply force. You can't, you will not, I will make it so that you are unable to, is force, or at least implies that forcible measures will be taken to ensure an inability, right? I thought we were readers and writers here, but I guess words just don't mean things anymore. Let's say that I think Haley worded herself in a way that wasn't cool. Let's say that. Let's say that I agree that this line was not okay. Mostly, I feel like meaningless books that are just written for shock value mm -hmm. i'm gonna go ahead and avoid something like broken dolls i will never read again i don't wish to read something like that again um it's definitely not for me so that's where i kind of draw the line that was the book for me that i was like th there's a line here and i'm feeling gross um i buddy read it with a friend who was feeling the same way and we were both just kind of looking at each other feeling like we were approaching a place that was no longer fun extreme horror so there's that and we kind of implore you, viewer, audience, to do the same. Really take a moment and think about where your limit is. And if you think you have no limits, Aspen thought she did, I definitely thought I did, just take a moment and think about it. Where's your limit? Where's your line? Is it similar to us? Is it not? Maybe it's something different. There are some personal triggers I have that I'm not going to talk about that I've been actively avoiding in extreme horror ever since I started reading it. I will never read a book with one specific theme and I still haven't and none of my critiques will ever apply to that because I'll never read about it and I don't feel fine like sharing about that on the internet but maybe you have one of those kind of limits and you're allowed to have that. It's valid. Nobody can take that away from you. And if you're still thinking, yeah, Haley, no, I have no limits. Just take a moment and think about what that says about you. No judgment at all. I want you to think about what that says about you. I'm not saying what I think. Aspen's not saying anything. We're just going to give you some time 
for soul searching. So make your own judgments, take your own thoughts into account, and we're going to move on to our next point. I would still call dedicating multiple books to women who you hate infinitely more of being a dick. So again, pot meat kettle. Yeah, if I disagree with something you say, I have the mental capacity to step back and go, you know what? I don't care. You don't like my stuff? Not a problem. I'm going to go and carry on doing what I'm doing because, you know, I'm making quite a nice living from it. Yeah, see, this is cute because dedicating a book to her after months of incessantly watching her shit doesn't scream, I don't care, but okay. You don't like my stuff? Not a problem. I'm going to go and carry on doing what I'm doing because, you know, I'm making quite a nice living from it. You, on the other hand, you seem to be so triggered by everything that you seem to think it's okay to tell people what they can and cannot do. And that, to me, is just fucking weird. What do those things have to do with each other? I'm making a decent living. You're so triggered, you feel like you can tell people what they can and can't do. Huh? It just reminds me of, like, sitting in church where the pastor would be, like, really on one on Sunday morning and he would feel like he's making such good points and, like, you can tell he feels like he's on fire, right? He's He feels like he is just spitting fact after fact about God. <laughs> and the people who love him in the congregation are like, yes pastor oh my god what a prophetic word and you me a heathen are sitting there like holy shit is everyone brainwashed here but me what the fuck is he talking about that's what this feels like everybody's got to eat it's capitalism hours i don't really care if people make money so i don't know <laughs> in the working class that is i don't care if people make money so like <laughs> i don't know why this is like a wow gotcha <laughs> but i will say that the double standard is super cute of him being like i'm so petty i made this book and it's successful and his fans are like wow what a king and then they go into Haley's comments and they're like, fuck you for making money off of this video and try to calculate how much she's making on Patreon as if her making money is evil because she had an opinion. But Matt making money off of dedicating books to multiple women who he does not like is fine. Interesting how that works. It's almost like it's... Once again, I just want to say life is too short, short to watch hundreds of hours of content from something that you hate for no reason. Like you're not even making a good point. Like you're not even using it for good. You're using it to be a misogynist. <laughs> so like life is kind of too short for that, but okay. He made another video, which he either deleted or got reported, uh, which Haley then stitched. <laughs> Well, it's still kicking off. Well, it's still kicking off, bro. Of course it is. She's reacting how literally any woman is going to react to finding out that a man has watched them for months and posted about them for months and shit talked them publicly for months and then dedicated a book to them. She just found that out. She's disturbed. That's the typical reaction. How did you think it would go? Like, how did he think it would go? How can a man be so far removed from reality that he thinks it would go a different way? What was she supposed to do? Clap? Ah, uh, yes, it is time to check off the misogynistic playbook bingo square for I am now inviting a woman who finds me to be a misogynist onto a live show or podcast so I can hold her captive while I explain in great detail why she is wrong and why I am right and I am not a misogynist. We have seen three different men authors do this in the last six months in the book community. There's got to be a written playbook somewhere that they are adhering to. It's so weird to watch this and have him ignore that he's created this. He's basically primed his audience for it because he's been posting about hey, since she reviewed his book in December. What a weird thing to wake up to, a reviewer attacking one of my books, not a problem. Isn't it though? Isn't it? But then going on an epic rant about certain groups of people who aren't in included in said books, stating that authors such as myself don't care about them. Erm, okay. So I guess moving forward, every book I write will have token characters related to all the various groups of, how of people now, so no one feels left out, and so this Karen can't feel offended on their behalf. Although listening to this, ladies, you don't think you're a misogynist when you you just put lady in quotes you really don't think like is any is anything up here i think she'd still find a reason to be offended while staying firm in her belief that male extreme horror authors oh so you do use male interesting right what they do because it's like they're like that in real life on that note a quick aside i've been doing this for over 10 years full time i've traveled the world for signings and meet and greets because of what i write so ask yourself am i writing this because it's who i am in real life or because it's basically opened the world for me and provided a good career for a decade anyways what's really weird is i had to flick through the comments and someone was pretending to be the, I had to flick through the comments as if he didn't read every single one because that comment was on the bottom. <laughs> I had to flick through the comments and someone was pretending to be me. I've had people do this to me before, but not normally in a video. It is essentially attacking my my work. Not a problem. And me as a person says more about the person making the video. The <laughs> 
the video just says she didn't like the book and that she has uh, found like an ongoing issue with uh, authors predominantly men in the genre writing stuff that is gratuitous basically and for him to like misrepresent that here is really disingenuous um but also the person who commented under the video was just joking they were like oh matt shaw here it was just a friend of Haley's like making a, a joke i guess if the jokes aren't sexual they're just lost on matt shaw i don't know some of the other comments on there were idiotic too oh so you admit you read them all with people stating they refund books that offend them which again told me all i need to know about this woman's channel basically it's the cool karen club the kkk this is proof that he has likened her to a nazi twice the videos within collectively known as the cuckoos. Oh, and taking a leaf from her book, funnily enough, she's supposed to be writing the best book ever. This post contains my views and opinions and I am entitled to them, so if you don't like it. So the comments then did the typical thing, referring to Haley and her friends as mean girls. Didn't I just do another video where another misogynist called reviewers mean girls? I feel like I did. Now, initially her video was discussed in an extreme horror group by some woman who did not like the video. That's where this comment came from, where Matt says, Let me guess, Haley, I dedicated a book to her. The let me guess portion, I feel like cannot possibly be true. I think he already watched the video and didn't have to guess. He knew exactly, he knew exactly who she was talking about, probably already watched it. A bunch of authors who are popular in the extreme horror community commented on this, and I wanna point out that it seems unlikely to me that these authors never saw Matt's continuous posts about and against Haley and other women. The fact that they saw him acting like this and never called in their friend made me lose faith in a lot of extreme horror authors very quickly. Thankfully, because of all the discourse surrounding this, a lot of men did come forward and say, hey, this is bullshit. This is misogynistic. This is bullshit. And I'll, I'll talk about them later because I really appreciate them. And uh, I ended up buying a lot of books from, from those dudes. So thank you. You know who you are. Um, let's talk about Matt's Facebook posts and <laughs> the comments real quick. So he then posts about his book, Moist to Guess It. This book is rather unfairly. Is it? Is it unfairly or is it that the context of your other actions caught up with you and got muddled? This book is rather unfairly being labeled as torture porn. It really isn't. It's a sexy romantic comedy in which is written through the eyes of a woman by a man because fuck you, that's why. To celebrate what a sexy little comedy it is, it is now available on Big Cartel to instantly download for just 50p. So grab whatever lubricant you prefer to use on yourself and happy reading you dirty little love monkeys. Again, Matt can't make any jokes unless they're sexual because he's just not funny. Now, before we even move on, let's talk about how he talked about Haley after she had found out that he had done this. So back in February, he says, when this book goes live on Etsy, not sure when, the hardback will come with a pair of signed underwear, not even joking. For those that know me, they'll know, they'll enjoy this book because it is so ridiculous. For those who don't know me, this book will make them so fucking mad and that is my only real reason for writing it. Would you like a cookie? The moist guess it. Oh, Brad, in my head, I could see him smiling at me as he started thrusting faster and harder, yet still lovingly, respecting my feelings and own enjoyment as all men do. Come in me. I love the feeling of cum shooting inside of me. The feeling of the erection throbbing with each sticky shot fired and in my head, I couldn't wait for him to do it for me. To fill me like a car at a petrol station. Do you consent? Yes, yes, a million times yes. Give me your seed. Okay, so um, I feel like he is making fun of consent here, <laughs> which is, where's the, what's the punchline? Like, somebody go ahead and write me an entire essay in the comments on how it's funny to make fun of consent when women rely upon that. When we, as parents, actually rely upon teaching consent to our kids so that our kids, especially those of us who were sexually assaulted when we were minors, don't end up like we were. So where's the punchline? What, what's funny about that? The answer is there isn't one. It's not funny. It's stupid. It's misogynistic. It's belittling. It's dehumanizing. Just say you're not funny and go. In January, he said this book is dedicated to this trout called Haley, who gets all pissy when men write through the eyes of a woman and also gets offended when men misrepresent other groups they have no business writing about too. Z's because he's so tired, just like I'm tired of reading his bullshit. Anyway, I'm ha I've been having a blast with it. Moist Gusset is a written, is a romance written through the eyes of a woman because, by a man, because fuck you, that's why. He really thinks that's jokes. It's just like top tier. He really thinks he like nailed it with that one. As you can see from the sample below, it perfectly cra 
captures a woman's mindset, so foresee no pro problems when this hits the market. Unedited sample. Bridget Jones had a diary. I had a best friend to sound off to. I could write a diary. Dating disaster after dating disaster. I could fill several diaries, but what happens to those books when I'm dead? Someone comes along, finds them, opens them, reads them, and no, I couldn't have my whole miserable, lonely life spelled out for these people to read and gossip about. Sure, I'd be dead, so it really wouldn't bother me. What if it's just not lights out at the end? What if we hang around as spirits? Blah, blah, blah. So this was a trend for months, right? And then she finds out and she talks about it and he says, uh-oh, I've upset the little darling. Ooh, infantilization. Oh my God, that's not misogynistic at all. Funny thing is, if she had actually read the book, then she'd have seen it was a romance, moist guess it, and it was dedicated to her and not actually about her. So I don't know where the torture porn comes into it given. You don't know why there might have been a mix up there. You don't know why you really don't. Why is it dedicated to her? Well, because she's the troll of the horror community saying white men should not be writing through the eyes of females because we do it so badly. To test the theory, I decided to have a crack and by Jove, she's right. I sure did struggles. You sure did struggles, didn't you? <laughs> As for her comment about writing honest reviews, capital letters, because that is how seriously she takes it. She is proving here that she has not read the book and written a fake review. The book isn't horror in the slightest. And again, no character is actually given her name, but put that to the one side, she recently tried giving the plot away for John Athan's book before saying how bad it was, and yeah, the plot she described was not the plot of the book she was talking about, and so again, not sure, entirely sure where that came from. Again, when he was asked to elaborate on this, he ran away. But my love, well done on once again proving to everyone that you are not the honest reviewer you pretend to be and just try to twist things to the narrative that suits you. <laughs> oh my god, the delicious, sweet and tangy irony of that sentence. That being said, I honestly wish you nothing but the best for this horror book you continually talk about writing. Jessica Hutchinson, who I I believe is the same person that commented underneath Haley's Goodreads reviews. I think she is the one obsessed with you. Now, Jessica, that doesn't make any fucking sense because Matt's the one who's been posting about Haley for nine fucking months and dedicated a whole ass book to her without her even knowing. I feel like if we're gonna go by the definition of obsessed, Matt's probably the one who's looking like the textbook example. Having seen her YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, wow, I'd say she is the one that's not dropping it. She doesn't want to discuss it any further, yet she keeps adding to it. My sibling in Christ, you just went across platforms and you're talking to the man who made content about this woman for nine months minimum. Hello? Whatever. She's just getting you new fans. Her viewers are going to pick up one of your books to see what all the fuss is about. And <laughs> who fucking cares? Is this another Haley or what? Oh, so we're admitting then that it's the same Haley that you've been talking about. Who's obsessed? It's still Haley, but the way she tries to twist things so she can be a victim is laughable, especially the part saying I scare her before she then proceeds to try to keep people, what? Get people to stop reading me, calling me names. My guy, you you likened her to a Nazi twice and you called her a trout in a book that you dedicated to her five months before she found out. Where, where are, where is the brain? Where's the brain cells? Are the synapses not firing? Knock, knock. Jesus Christ, she needs to calm down. That's just annoying. I'm a girl and I love your books, by the way. Yeah, you, a girl, can still be a misogynist. Congratulations. She just sounds like she loves attention. Nine months of posts, watching her content, dedicating a book to her. She just found out. And somehow, she loves the attention. What? If the extreme horror or splatter, splatterpunk community is not your cup of tea, then go, no, don't go anywhere near it. It is. It's just that Matt has successfully proven to you that he is going to speak for you and tell you what to think. And that is that he has worked very diligently to discredit her as a reviewer so that you don't listen to anything she has to say. I mean, it's a cute tactic, but also kind of stupid. I love your response, extremely professional and willing to talk. Unfortunately, people like that will never hold civil discussions. Why would she want to hold a civil discussion with a person who's been watching her for nine months and talking about her in a really shitty way, likened her to a Nazi twice and called her a trout? Extremely professional? Where? Where? Matt, I'm a 63 year old woman. I have a very wide range of literary likes from classics to friends who write for their own children. You are a talented writer. Please do not let this person waste any more of your time. Nine months. She had no idea. He kept it going. Could have been avoided if he had not kept it going. Dawn. Perfect response. I have no idea who this person is or why she feels the need to yuck a per another person's yum. That's not technically what happened. Her yum is extreme horror. She just has some concerns about the way that it's written and the harm it might potentially do, which is a conversation that y'all can have and have disagreements upon. Matt's not willing to have a disagreement with her about that though, for the right reasons. He's looking for something to shit on her about because she shat on his book back in December. So 
let's not forget that point. Probably going to sound a bit harsh, but she is a want. Is she a wannabe writer? Who cares? Who cares? He likened her to a Nazi twice, called her a trout, dedicated a book to her, and watched her for months. Who fucking cares? Good lord, it's crazy that she thinks her opinions are so important. Even worse, maybe there are others out there who do as well. Absolutely freaking clown. And on a side note, that shit theme song she has, her show is bad enough, but nothing worse than someone with bad theme music. This is the stupidest thing that I have read all day. I cannot believe that someone thought those words, typed them out, looked at them, and thought, this is it. This is the argument I want to make. I'm proud of that. What? I just love you, Matt Shaw. You don't get your fe feathers ruffled. <laughs> you don't get your feathers ruffled ever and so intelligently put stupid people in their place. Nine months, watched her content, complained about her, likened her to a Nazi toy, called her a trout, called her an amber, who he wrote torture revenge porn about. You don't get your feathers ruffled ever. That's not feathers being ruffled none of these people make any fucking sense <laughs> all of this is so <laughs> this is the most unintelligent bullshit i have read all fucking week and i've had to watch a lot of stupid tiktok fights in the last week does anyone have a youtube link what's your youtube channel he says sorry but i won't provide a link because it's nothing but negativity and bullshit this is the one good thing that he has ever done in this entire situation i mean he should have told his audience please don't send me her stuff in the first place if it's about my books i don't need to know that but at at least at a minimum he did this wow bravo sir you finally did one thing right. You guys ignore her. She's obviously trying to make herself relevant using your success. It's sad, really. Huh? Why did she, why would she have bought the physical copy of his book to try to ride the coattails of one author who then talked about her for nine months and she just found out and is now reacting to all of that information? Where's the logic? Now she has an okay following on YouTube and there's always room for debates within the genre. She talks about wanting debates and tries having them, but she does so with her friends only or those who agree with her. For good discussion, we need conversations from both sides, but she's against that. She never said that. What she doesn't want is to talk to you because you, again, likened her to a Nazi twice, called her a trout, watched her for months, dedicated a book to her after you called her Amber twice, and you wrote torture porn about Amber Heard. So when you just wake up after an eight hour sleep to see Amber has p just released a TikTok tagging me no less, stating hours after back and forth, I have just uploaded a video all about her. Yeah, the video and open invitation was recorded about you so as ha to have a proper conversation about the state of extreme horror, but yeah. Yeah. Your new narrative about being that I've just done it because you're clearly still on my mind how I dedicated a book to you after you gave me a negative review, blah, blah, blah. Matt Lutton, who is an author. She obviously can't read. Dedicated does not mean about. Matt Shaw. Amber Heard moment, pledged equals donated. Okay. The way that he refers to Haley as Amber in two different places. <laughs> Wow, it's definitely not horrifying at all to see him refer to her as Amber after he, mm, let me check my notes, wrote a torture revenge porn book about Amber Heard. That's a pointed choice he made there. Let's talk about that for a minute. What I think about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard as people, what I think of that verdict is nothing. I think of nothing about it. Um, I have zero opinions anymore on either of those people. The only takeaway that I had was to be fucking disturbed because of people like Matt Shaw. The way that Amber Heard was discussed in public discourse, pointed out to me how deeply misogynistic uh, so many people are, men and women included, how deeply ingrained those attitudes are into people and how dangerous double standards are, which you can see on full display in the way that Matt Shaw says Amber Heard deserved it. The way, quite frankly, that men <laughs> use this up as an opportunity to say, finally, we can say how much we want to fucking harm women was terrifying. I watched that trial and I was feeling mostly like everybody else, right? And then I couldn't watch anymore because of men. I have never seen men act about that, act like that about domestic violence ever uh, in any domestic violence related case. It's like they were waiting. It's like they were feeling so validated. And then I looked and I looked and these same men never talk about men who have done the things that Amber Heard was accused of doing. Like they, they don't care. They, ha they do not care because they believe <laughs> they made hating Amber Heard their entire personality. All this trial being public served to do was give me an opportunity to watch in real time as men prepare perpetuated harmful stereotypes and undermined the experiences of women and other marginalized genders and victims of violence and domestic violence included. Did you know that in the U.S. homicide deaths among pregnant women are more prevalent than deaths from maternal health issues? So hypertensive, hypertensive disorders, hemorrhages, sepsis. Women in the U.S. are more likely
likely to be murdered during pregnancy or soon after childbirth than they are to die from the three leading obstetric causes of maternal death. We have more to fear from men than when we are pregnant than we do from our own health and we have a really high mortality rate in the United States. But men are more likely to kill us. <laughs> when survivors of abuse witness the skepticism and backlash faced by someone like Amber Heard, when we see the demands put on her by men who are watching this trial who are saying she didn't do XYZ and therefore she's not the perfect victim by my standards and therefore she's not a victim at all. We are less likely, likely to come forward about our own experiences, let alone try to make a court case out of them when people do this. I didn't talk about what happened to me and I still do not go into detail about what happened to me because I think that if I tell people despite the fact that I was a minor when I was assaulted, people will tell me that I put myself in that position and shrug off what happened to me like I did to myself for over a decade. The fear of not being believed, of being accused of lying, or facing retaliation discourages survivors from saying what happened to us, let alone getting help, like setting aside entirely getting any sort of legality involved. This perpetuates a culture of silence and enables abusive behavior to persist unchecked, which is why we are more likely to die from murder than maternal health outcomes when we are pregnant. This is so ingrained in our culture that even victims of sexual assault like myself tell ourselves that we are not victims because we do not meet this very specific definition of what it means to be a sexual assault victim or another kind of abuse victim. Why bother coming forward <laughs> to hear from other people I didn't meet their standard when I have already been reinforcing that upon myself since I was 17? Effectively, I have been doing that to myself. Why do I need you to do it too? The way Amber Heard was discussed reinforced harmful stereotypes about marginalized genders, particularly women, particularly those who speak out against harmful men. Women who challenge the status quo and accuse men of abuse are often portrayed as manipulative or opportunistic or seeking some sort of revenge. These stereotypes are weaponized against women and men delegitimize the experience of women who have been victims of violence, making it harder for us to find any support or even understanding. By allowing misogynistic double standards to persist in the public discourse like we saw with Amber Heard's trial, we continue to create a culture where powerful men are protected at the expense of all women's safety and well-being. This not only harms individual survivors, but also reinforces systems of inequality. So whether or not Amber Heard did anything wrong, I don't care anymore. Men already think all of that about us, judging by their reactions to that trial. Their reactions to that trial made me feel so deeply fucking unsafe. And I was glad when my husband identified it as well, and he stopped watching and having an opinion on it too. Because exactly what would I need to do or what would I need to not do in order for me to be avoiding a position where men would write torture porn about me. That's where my brain went, watching all these men react to that trial. One of the most insidious forms of misogyny directed at Amber Heard was victim blaming. Many were questioning her credibility, suggesting that she was making up these accusations for personal gain or trying to become famous. You know, like the entire fucking premise of Matt Shaw's revenge torture porn, porn book about her. This dismissal and disbelief of a woman's claims of abuse perpetuate the idea that women routinely lie about being victims of violence, domestic violence, sexual violence, which in turn discourages other victims from coming forward and seeking justice. And additionally, the gaslighting that she experienced where her perceptions and experiences were invalidated is a classic tactic used to silence victims of abuse in their domestic abuse situations by their abuser. But not just in those situations, in all situations where women are facing forms of violence against them. And in fact, I would say that this was a, a similar tactic used against Haley in this Facebook post by Matt Shaw, which I will now read to you. New day, same bullshit. This will be the last time I address this current situation between myself and a certain YouTube individual. Brace yourselves, it's going to be a long one. There's misinformation being spread around about myself. One, that I wrote a torture porn book based on this person. Not true. I've never written about a book about this person and never would. As my readers know, I actually offer up for them to be in my books as either the good or bad person. It's something my readers love, so why would I do it for someone who hates my work? Why'd you do it for Amber Heard? I dedicated a book to someone because they gave me a one-star review that this is not the case. You did. Twice. Review, uh, which is one star. 
Um, I don't mind a one star review because it shows you made it as an author. You know, it's no longer your mum and dad and family members rating your book. It's strangers and they just happen to think your work shit. But it's more believable if you have some one star reviews and just as well for I have many. Um, this particular one star review got under my skin though because it's particularly vicious. Not about the book, but about me. They were questioning my mental health and how sick I must be to write such trash. Well, I went away and I took their review on board and I wrote fucking filth in response to them. A sticky mess from the author of Sick Bastards with a message to the reviewer on the back, which basically just tells them to eat shit. Um, the story itself follows a guy who has a weird fetish. He likes things that smell disgusting to people like you and me. Before we go further, we need to understand why the dedication in the first place. This individual did a YouTube video stating men should not be writing female characters because they are no good at it. It got my brain ticking and I got an idea to do a romance book written through the eyes of a woman by a man as per the tagline because fuck you, that's why. My readers know my sense of humor and the book was well received. However, the book would not have existed had it not been for that comment. So yes, the book was dedicated to a first name base only. There were no links to them, no links to their work. It's also worth noting that within the dedication, it states that art is subjective. One person's trash is another's treasure. You also likened her to a Nazi in that dedication. I stand by my comments though that no one should dictate what a person should and shouldn't write or read because you, if you don't like it, it doesn't mean another won't. Has this person given me a one-star review before? I don't know. If they have, I have not seen it. That's This is a lie because Haley's entire talk about the content of books where men, particularly white men, are writing harmful stereotypes about women and people of color and queer folks came directly after she talked about how Matt's book was her least favorite book of the year. That's the only reason he knew about that entire conversation. So that's a lie. Three, bad reviews. The moment a reviewer states they do not leave one star review on a fake one star review is the moment they lose credibility, especially when lying about other things such as declaring I wrote a torture porn book about her. The truth about reviews is we all get bad reviews. You cannot please everyone and really shouldn't bother to try because you will go from insane from doing so. In truth, many bad reviews actually sell books more than the good reviews. I had one by a person who said my writing was awful, I needed help. So I made that as my banner tagline for book signings and the book they were talking about sells out at the convention every time. So yes, bad reviews can be gold. He's referencing the other book in which he got a negative review from a woman and then went on to write an extreme horror book dedicated to that reviewer. Apparently, their words, this fake review was done in order to get my attention because it's all I pay attention to apparently. For the sake of clarity, I have Messenger. My Facebook page has a comment section and I even have a WhatsApp group with my readers in it, not forgetting. My email address is readily available. In, sh in short, I am not hard to reach, but this individual chose this particular route to find me and that's where it starts to get more interesting. Four, an open invite. I invited this person to do a podcast with me with someone unbiased as a moderator in which we could discuss the horror community and genre as a whole. She repeatedly states she feels unsafe and pushed out by the community. We will get to this later and no one should feel that. I was ready to hear her points. I was ready to try and learn from them and hopefully she would have heard my points and such and then we could work together to try and help feel people feel more inclusive in this industry. With regards to her feeling unsafe in the community, I understand as to why she might feel shunned due to comments made about her but their comments made for reasons. For example, she tells all readers who don't have triggers to have a good look at themselves and ask what sort of person they are. You cannot make such a comment without readers getting agitated by it. Okay, I want to stop him there and point out that that just had happened like two days before he wrote this post. He had been watching her and dedicating books to her for months before she said that. So that's a moot point at this point. And it's disingenuous for him to pretend that that's like, <laughs> that that's like a major issue when that just happened happened. People will and do read what they want and yet here is someone outwardly judging them. Given her day job, this is somewhat of a surprise to me, but there you go. She attacks a number of readers with such a comment and gets backlash from it. I try and converse with her and see if we can actually understand each other's viewpoint and I am met with the same backlash from those who comment no without knowing the full story, which brings us to, okay, I cannot stop pointing out that he for months targeted this woman. Number five, the victim card. This is really fucked up. <laughs> what I'm about to read is so unsettling and fucked up and speaks to everything that I just said about the Amber Heard shit. And this made me feel so fucking shitty and so upset and so hurt and angry and, and unseen and invalidated as a survivor of sexual abuse as a minor. I, I don't even know. I, I, don't, I don't understand how anybody, e even if you're not a victim, could read this and think that this was an okay thing to say. This is so incredibly fucked up. The worst sort of person in the world is one who plays the victim. In our Goodreads exchange, where I made the offer to go on a podcast and remain polite throughout, sir, 
likened her to a Nazi, called her Amber. She declined the author offer because I scared her. She has seen all my comments about her and it's a natural reaction for a woman to be scared of men in this world. Firstly, my comments have, when made, which isn't often, been more to do with not watching her videos because I don't like the content as negativity for the sake of it isn't my thing. Also that her voice annoys me, which is fine to say given that the insults she throws my way and has for a long time now. Also, this is my opinion, which is something she likes to say a lot and now how she is entitled to her opinion and will not be silenced by a man. The thing is, when I have genu genuinely been scared of anyone, I tend to avoid them. Social media gives us plenty of ways to block people. I have not called them a prick on Instagram. I have repe not repeatedly called them an incel or a fucking incel. I have not gone public asking for people to step up to them either. I mean, they're a scary person, so why would I? But she is apparently scared of me. Meanwhile, today, I had four death threats on TikTok and a number of supporter her supporters admitting to giving me one-star reviews. As if those are in any way similar. <laughs> okay, even if this person did just do one fake review, the fact that they actively encourage others to leave fake reviews is not a good sign either. As for, this is where it really gets fucked up and I'm gonna try to rein it in. Okay. <laughs> As for it's natural for women to be scared of men in this world, no, it really isn't. It's tragic for women to feel that way, or anyone for that matter. And if you do actually feel that way to an entire sex, whom you also continually attack on videos, then it would suggest some help is needed. And that's not written as an insult, but through genuine concern. There's enough hatred and wrong in the world to not feel unsafe because of every man or woman. It can go back ways. Um, I'm just gonna keep reading. Six, before this person replied to my comment on Goodreads and made an open invitation on TikTok too, she stitched the opening and followed it up with a pity me post which worked as her friends have gone on the attack the reviews the death threats the name calling they then started accusing me of deleting the original video because they couldn't find it although it had been reported to tiktok and tiktok removed it however i appealed that decision because it wasn't an attack and certainly didn't go against their guidelines tiktok reviewed it agreed and put the video back to its original standing so people can see for themselves i haven't bullied or even named her now i tried to organize an adult conversation with someone in order to make things better for everyone it has unfortunately been met with a resounding no fair enough and name calling across most platforms and people who've never read me stating they will never read me, not a problem, because the answer was a resounding no, I've muted this person across all platforms and I am capable of doing that on. So I have never seen their post again. The people who threatened me with death threats were reported and their comments were removed and hopefully their accounts too. And the people who've resorted to name calling have also had TikTok remove their comments and strike their accounts for breach of terms. I wanna set aside a moment here to say that um, when this discourse was happening on TikTok, when he, or when he originally posted this, I had as of yet not seen seen any death threats to Matt Shaw. And I was like, that's interesting that he didn't post screenshots. So I don't know if he received death threats. What I did ended up seeing after, maybe a day or so after he posted this, was two different comments from people saying not death threats, but, but death threat adjacent. And I reported them because I take a hard stance against that. The thing is though, Matt Shaw never did the same for Haley. And it feels as if he set her up to receive them. And he never said, don't send and death threats to this woman. But I have a hard time thinking that he would ever care about such a thing considering, again, I'm just gonna keep saying it, he wrote a revenge torture porn book about Amber Heard. So if you see death threats, you should report them. But if you have a following, you should also actively encourage not doing that. And you should definitely not write books that encourage the idea of it. I think the saddest part of this for me is that I was willing to have a conversation with someone who clearly doesn't like me in order to try and make things better. Bro, she didn't like your book. <laughs> She didn't like your book and then had a conversation as many re readers do in many different genres about how as a whole, there is an issue in the author community where white men write outside their experience and do so in a way that is harmful. And then you went on to talk about her for months. Leaving all of that context out on purpose is so manipulative and disgusting to me. I was willing to have a conversation. Yeah, now after you've watched her for months, made fun of her for months, called her Amber, wrote a book dedicated to her, likened her to a Nazi twice, called her a trout. Now, oh, but I'm willing to have a conversation with her. That rings so incredibly hollow for anybody who knows all of the context and not just the context that he left in this post. This is stupid. As I've always said day one, including about bad reviews, everyone is welcome to their opinion. And if you read this and take offense to the kind of person that I am, then I was never really the offer for you anyway. Yet, as ever, I don't wish bad things for you. Unless you're Amber Heard, right? Again, the world has enough crap in it and we all have our 
own battles to fight, so why wish more on someone? That's it. That's the message. And again, I won't be discussing this further. Yes, if there is someone out there who hates extreme horror and they want to have a debate as to why it's bad, I genuinely think this could be a great podcast talk and I have had podcasters reach out to me asking to host it, so do get in touch. Again, Haley wouldn't be the right person for that because Haley likes extreme horror, so continuously trying to frame it as if she doesn't is really shitty. Now, I want to talk about Matt's book, Hub, that Haley has mentioned discomfort about. I don't know if it's child porn because I haven't read it. I think there's a discussion that probably needs to be had within the extreme horror community, which I don't read much of. I like Sarah Tantlinger, who wrote To Be Devoured. I have not read, it's not really a genre that I reach much for because I just prefer magic, so I, I'm, I'm more likely to read. Extreme horror is typically pretty short, too, and I'm, I'm more of a more of a longer book girly, so I it's, it's not a genre that I'm against. I think that, you know, it's fine. It's just not what I reach for, so I'm not the person to have that discussion, but I think that those who are in the community should probably do that. <laughs> And I'm not a trauma-informed therapist, so I don't feel like I can really say much about the effects of extreme horror, right? But Haley tried. And here's the thing, this will, all of what Matt Shaw did, this will discourage others from trying to have that discussion. It will also discourage honest reviews. And what's so fucking funny about Matt Shaw continuously saying, not a problem about reviews, is they are a problem for him. That's why he keeps reading his one-star reviews and then dedicating books to people who give him one star. But the funny thing is that he changed his tune about them several times. So like originally years ago, he said, if you're an author and you get upset by a bad review being published, you're in the wrong business. You must be thick skinned. You need to hear that poor reviews, which state why they didn't like the book and learn from it. Sometimes they're more valuable than good reviews. This is kind of good advice, but then again, I don't think authors should be in review spaces at all because it just opens us up to, um, you know, cases like this, but okay. <laughs> but months and months before Haley said jack shit about triggers and needing to take a good look at yourself if you don't have any, which Matt latched onto with absolute glee in order to <laughs> attempt to discredit. Before that happened, he got mad originally because she reviewed his book, right? And said it was very men writing Whitman and that authors needed to take more care. That was assumedly the initial actual incident that started all of this. So how we got from March 2019, Matt saying you need to be thick skinned to April 2019, Matt complaining about his reviews and then to 2023, Matt now having dedicated two different books to two different women who gave him one star is an interesting jump. So although that's what he said in March, here's what he said in April. As it says, don't read this review, but if you can read a blurb and like extreme horror with a bit of filth in it, do read o Octopus. And it's a review that he took a screenshot of, didn't even leave the name out of. It said, don't read this. Not at all what I, was that what I was expecting. Blah, blah, blah. They didn't like his book. He should stop going in review spaces like full stop. But I just want to, I just want to point out, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. So now according to Matt, when someone says don't read this, that's them forcing their beliefs on you. That's what he said about Haley. So his response, despite saying a month before oop, this tweet, is you need to have thick skins by his own standards. He's now saying don't read this review. He's now forcing you to not read this review, right? Isn't that how that worked? Didn't we change the definition of forcing to mean that? I thought that Matt did that. See how silly that sounds? So now we can agree that Haley saying you shouldn't read this wasn't her forcing anyone to do anything and Matt has a major issue with double standards. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. The whole book of the U-Turns books is to take the books in an entirely different and unexpected direction. This only works when readers keep the end to themselves by detailing the twist and ending in the review. You've literally just shit on the book for everyone else. I want to issue a challenge for authors. Stop telling reviewers how to review. The review isn't for you. The review is to help other readers. And some other readers want to know how a book ends. I'm so tired of authors telling us how to do our job. That's frustrating. We're all thrilled when someone takes time to review a story, but keep it spoiler free, people. No, I'm going to review however I need to review because the review isn't for you. Will it cost the rest of the readers the other books line up in the series because it's shown that the whole concept can be derailed in two sentences, so there's no point in continuing it. Oh, please. Oh my God. You want to cry about things like people making themselves the victim. People would have still read the shit. Stop it. It's so stupid. Was the review post on Amazon? Your readers jump on board as soon as they see you've got a new one out. They won't wait to read a review. For what it's worth, I reckon these other books will still be 
okay. Maybe only new readers discovering you would be impacted by spoilers. Yeah, exactly. No, I was on Goodreads. All, and I know about it because it was sent to me by another reader with the words, no point reading that then. Okay, one reader not knowing to not read reviews is not a reason for you to stop writing books in a series. This is so childish. This is like, this is like how my fucking seven-year-old acts. Authors and publishers posting screenshots of negative reviews of their work just causes more and more reviewers to, to not just stop reviewing their work, but reviewing in general. Stop doing it. Seriously, it just makes you look like a petulant child. I agree. Well, I feel attacked. If it's a funny negative review, I remove the name and share it. I saw you not remove a name, but okay. Negative reviews even make up my banner ad, and when I do convention with those books, they're always the first to sell out. Okay, then why do you keep dedicating books to women who don't like your books? Maybe you should just stop reading your negative reviews. That's different. This person screenshot the whole review with their reviewer name and then called their cronies to have a bitch fest about it. My god, that sounds so familiar. Hmm. Ah, well they're a dick then. Negative reviews can be a great source of entertainment, but just to bitch about because someone didn't like your book is just stupid. You can't please everyone. The sweet and tangy delicious taste of irony yet again. Yet him, this is him a year and a half before this. A lot of reviews complaining about how much too is too sick to finish, so they give it a couple stars. The, ver the blurb clearly states that that was the intention of the book so surely that makes it a five-star book oh well let's make the sequel even sicker gave up with facebook today everyone is playing the this game of movies i hate overrated blah blah gotta wonder why we create art when this is how people re use their free time mass posts shitting on various things review stuff by all means but these toxic posts are bullshit reviews <laughs> can be whatever the reviewer wants to say. As long as they are honest, who fucking cares? Every review is not for you. And reviews of your own work are definitely not for you. Your fans will tell you whether or not they liked your work. You don't need to read negative reviews. Another one star review saying one of my books is too sick and disturbing and they worry about my mental health. So do my doctors, to be fair. I'm not even mad. These reviews are gold. I feel like you are mad because then I think this is the exact book that you went on to dedicate a new, a new book to. So I think you are mad. I'm just saying. Now, before we continue, I keep saying that it obviously is not just Haley saying this stuff about Matt's books. It's it's an ongoing thing. And, and again, he did dedicate fucking filth to uh, another woman who reviewed his book negatively. But I pulled other reviews because it's not just Haley obviously saying this stuff about Matt's books. Maybe this kind of thing does it for some people, but the whole thing was fucking revolting and felt like the author was just getting off on it. Another one. I think the shock and disgust factor took away from me wanting to consider the morality between humiliating a woman, killing one woman seemingly needlessly, raping another one multiple times, the book seemed need unnecessarily harsh and brutal towards the treatment of women, especially the men being downright sexist and getting away without much consequence. This might have been an intentional commentary about sexism in society. I fucking doubt it. And men not facing as many consequences in general, but it just came off as sexist. Another one. It was written in a way that felt like it was made by a 13-year-old creepypasta author. So it's an ongoing theme with people telling him him, people telling each other in their reviews, hey, this guy seems kind of sexist. He writes like a 13 year old boy. A lot of this is shock for shock's sake and I'm uncomfortable with it, etc, etc. Which is exactly what Haley was talking about when she said that a lot of the extreme horror books, she feels like the ones written particularly by white men can be <laughs> gratuitous just for the sake of it. And she thought it was probably time for the community to have a conversation about that. And she was right. His books and his human humor are sexual. It's not funny. It's creepy. It does read like the creepiness of like the creepy guy who lives downstairs from you that you actively try to avoid on your way home from work and also a 13 year old boy who just found out how to Google certain terms. For instance, here's a Facebook post where he went and saw the wax figure of Audrey Hepburn, one of the greatest women who ever lived in my opinion, and he couldn't even not make that sexual. Here's a post where he's joking about 69ing a dog. If these things are supposed to be funny, I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm not funny, or maybe this type of humor is actually just stupid and creepy and lazy. Either way, I agree with this mass amount of reviewers that his books have had. This type of humor isn't funny. It's gross. And he leans into it because, I, assumedly, some of his fans think it's funny, but then when others point out how creepy it actually is, he gets very upsetty spaghetti. Like, here's the introduction for the book that he wrote about Haley. Oh, I'm sorry. 
the book that he dedicated to Haley. Introduction, kind of. Men get crap for writing sex scenes, but I know I can do them well. How so? Because I've had pictures from women flicking the bean and telling me it was over some of the sex scenes I had written. The mind boggles, really, given my usual genre is horror, but each to their own. I'm not here to kink shame, as well as photos of boobs and vaginas. I've even had a dick picture sent through, but that was an accident for it was from my brother and intended for his partner at the time, Matilda. Matt, Matilda, it's an easy mistake to make. I'm not surprised I write them well, because I am actually pretty good in bed. Only yesterday did I manage to last at a full 18 pumps. Read it. 1, 8, 18. Oh yeah. My sister was most impressed. My father, not so much. Hardly surprising though, given he only managed 7 pumps and even then one of those missed the hole. My sister laughed. I laughed. My mother, well she said nothing. She's dead. But you know, we like to include her so she doesn't feel left out. Anyway, believe it or not, this is a very serious book. A very serious book indeed. I'm here to prove to the women out there that I am proper good at writing the fucks and the romance. I am by no means trolling. So ladies, prepare to get all moist in the gussets and remember, pictures to the usual email address, time to get drippy, your perverted little pal Matt. That is the book that he dedicated to Haley and although he didn't write torture porn and dedicate it to Haley, he did again write torture porn about Amber Heard, assumedly, and uh, he did admittedly write fucking filth dedicated to a different reviewer who questioned if he was well based on his content named Donna. So he got a negative review and in response to it wrote something disgusting and again he wrote that book about Amber Heard. So although he didn't write torture porn about Haley, you can see why those details might have gotten mixed up. <laughs> because of his own past actions that he conveniently left out of these very long Facebook posts where he darvoed the shit out of Haley, but didn't mention that this is the second woman reviewer who he has done this to on top of the Amber Heard book, who's a real life woman, who he then went on to refer to one of the reviewers as. Okay. I want to really talk about, real quick, about Matt's post and how he he called Haley Amber. There's nothing worse than somebody who plays the victim card and how he's like, well, she can't be scared of me because because she didn't do these very particular actions that I do when I'm scared of somebody. This is called perfect victim ideology. All of us play into this, even with our own selves. I've done this to myself. We believe that if certain individuals do not meet a certain set of standards of um, behavior, those behaviors being things like vulnerability, innocence, helplessness, if they don't meet those standards, then they are not as worthy of being believed, or they are not as deserving of things like understanding and support when they become victims of crimes, including domestic violence and sexual assault, but also things just like gender-based discrimination and harassment. This ideology creates a society in which we hold on to these biases against victims if they don't do exactly what we want them to do and be and say in order to be a perfect victim, which we will then feel like we need to take care of them. This directly impacts the way that we as a society respond to victims. This idea that somebody has to be the perfect victim causes us to look at cases of abuse and harassment harassment and basically just brush them off because they don't meet this measure. We measure them to say, okay, does it meet these like boxes of like, they have to be this vulnerable and they have to act this helpless and they have to be this innocent, both in personality and in physical appearance. Women are less likely to be believed if in vulner if in personality and physical appearance, they exhibit like uh, traits like strength. If they don't meet this very predetermined idea of what it means to be helpless, then they are brushed aside. Scientific investigations into domestic violence have shown us th that these biases about what it means to be a perfect victim impact legal outcomes. So of course, we are less likely to come forward because even we tell ourselves, I don't meet that perfect victim. I, I did this and that and this. I, I could have somehow done a specific set of actions to prevent my assault and I didn't act a certain way after I was assaulted. So I'm not, I'm not the kind of victim that even I I would accept. So I can't even accept myself. So why would I expect anybody else to accept me? So you don't say anything. That's what his post was rooted in. So seeing all of this, what did men do? Did they act as they did with Amber Heard? Some did and some didn't. And some tried to say neutral, but silence does not aid anyone. It only seeks to allow problems like misogyny to fester uh, left unchecked. So let's talk about the dudes who treated Haley, assumedly as Matt <laughs> intended uh, by referring to her as 
such like another Amber. You want to subtweet? I feel 90% of reviewers and book, book bloggers are leeches on the industry, desperate to get famous while doing the bare minimum, yet writers, publishers allow them almost unchecked power and freedom, all for a blurb from a random re reader with a WordPress. There's no oversight for these reviewers, no behavior or quality control. If an author dares question anything we're attacked, reviews are for the readers. I should go get my shirt. How about something I learned in art school? If you cannot do the thing, you cannot critique the thing. Nobody told you that in art school. You're such a liar. One last thing. I'm not supporting the idea of harassing reviewers. I'm just saying that a lot of reviewers kind of suck and they shouldn't be placed on this pedestal that they seem to have scammed their way onto. Matt. Or when you try to reach out, you're accused of harassment without rise. lies made about you and their little friends listen to one side of the story only and send abuse and death threats. That's the story. It's so weird because he could be literally talking about Haley. What happened to Haley there? Because that is what happened to Haley. <laughs> but then Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. Ryan's one of the good ones. Ryan is a dude that I ended up buying a book from because he said the book written inspired by your review you didn't like and then dedicated to the reviewer is the harassment you dolt bravo ryan thank you thank you for bringing logic into a conversation that previously had been completely logic less yep another leech reviewer trying to claw their way to fame by stirring up as much drama and outrage as possible over something they're not even involved in that entire community is garbage s.a cosby a dude who's a writer of horror stepped in and this is why i bought his book <laughs> also the number of women who have been assaulted or murdered by a man who didn't like something they said because his small dick energy made him a fragile baby bird is high enough that we should all I'll take weird obsessive behavior seriously. Thank you. If a man had been watching my shit for nine months and dedicating a review to me, a book to me, called me a trout and likened me to a Nazi twice and also called me an Amber twice, yeah, I'd be fucking creeped out too. Honestly, if you're a writer who feels no one should critique your work unless they also write books, then you have a very short-sighted view of artistic criticism. And finally, a review is just an opinion. You can ignore it. So I bought <laughs> Ryan Levy's and uh, S.A. Cosby's books after this. Matt Letton and Stuart Bray, though, also extreme horror authors, took a different approach than S.A. Cosby and Ryan. Duncan Ralston said, wait until she sees the one I'm putting out on Halloween. Matt Letton, fiction shouldn't have boundaries. Horror and comedy are two things that should never be censored because it allows us to look at things in every light and angle. She wasn't calling for censorship. She was calling to be better. If you feel like that's, that's, that's censorship, then you might want to... <laughs> You might want to want to think some things over. Aaron Beauregard said, thank you, Megan. People are wild. I'll never understand the way some of them think in response to Megan making a post about uh, Haley's video. Somebody jumped in and said, she's not a fan. I've seen numerous videos of her going on rants about authors. The thing, the new thing is to claim you're a fan of a subgenre or genre so people don't try to say you aren't when you shit on them. Why would anybody do that? That is so stupid. That Why would anyone go out of their way to fucking do that? What would be the reason? What would be the fucking purpose that doesn't make any sense and also judging by Haley's goodreads and her her actual youtube account which i've watched that's just not fucking true a couple of things that i did not organize very well but i still wanted to point out matt at one point says it thanks to the sheer stupidity on some of her comments that the book moist gusset exists this just tells me that he was never interested in this bullshit disingenuous nonsense about oh i want to have an adult conversation you thought she was stupid so you wrote a book in response to her where in the dedication you likened her to a Nazi. That is what happened. That that that's that's what happened. Like period. <laughs> uh, it looks like Matt got his information about where the the whole uh, her saying that a book was wrong from some random commenter where he said, "OMG, Matt! I just watched her describe the groomer saying it was about pedos tricking kids to meet at a spot so they could abduct them to make porn. What a liar!" So if your source is just Facebook comments, maybe you should try harder to verify information instead of going out of your way to describe credit somebody. Oh, here's an opportunity. Oh my gosh, this man Brian said something that already agrees with something that I, like, you, you already didn't like her, so you were just like, thank you, Brian. I will now use that to make an argument that this woman hated my book and everything she says is stupid. Here's proof. Like, stop. This is so stupid. He got a comment from somebody on one of his posts saying, you should be ashamed of yourself. She's clearly a sane, rational, and caring individual whom is looking out for your best interests. Send her some flowers and an apology note, and then write a disturbing story that really 
really shows that cunt her disemboweled violent corpse so she can see the difference too far so yeah somebody else said honestly if you had written a book about torturing that stupid bitch i'd probably have even more respect for you because to be honest that'd be metal as fuck and Haley herself got a comment that said hey you sexually frustrated bitch don't know why you messing ratings of my man matt books in goodreads you didn't read it but maybe someone should gut you open like a fish pull your insides out and see if there is anything in there or just rotten smelly air stay alert bitch that's a death threat so i think it's really interesting that matt completely ignored that and didn't do his due diligence to try to prevent that from happening to Haley. so that is the story of matt shaw extreme horror writer who watched a reviewer for months uh after already dedicating a extreme horror book to a reviewer who gave him one star dedicate after writing a torture revenge porn book about amber heard watched a reviewer for months likened her to a nazi twice called her amber twice dedicated a, a book to her in which he seems to make jokes about consent in sexual situations um and then when she found out about all of this he tried to darvo the shit out of her turn the tables and be like but she said something about the extreme horror community moot point moot point at this point <laughs> after the last nine months of bullshit moot point don't think you actually care virtue signaling nonsense uh this video has gone on long as fuck thank you for sitting with me that was a lot to go over i don't think i have anything more to say i think i've said all i need to say okay um obviously don't send anybody any death threats ever no matter what they do please do not do that please don't liken people to nazis write what you want to write but stay out of review spaces and be better to each other and reviews are for readers check out essay cosby ryan thomas laby chris williams christian francis and i'll put up a bunch of books here that i bought in the wake of this from dudes who are actually being cool and not being pieces of shit <laughs> they would call them white knights i would call them rightfully pointing out misogyny you know but i'm built different i guess so okay thank you so much for watching leave your comments and questions down below do not attack harass or send death threats to anybody ever that's really shitty don't do that you're a terrible person if you do that thanks for watching see you next time this is for the misogynist this is for everybody else okay bye well this video has been a lot of editing good good god okay now i have to say thank you for being a friend to my therapy bills patrons and those are alexander ally magpie ambihextris I always want to say ambidextrous and that's wrong. So I'm going to not call you ambihextrious, okay? Also, thank you, new member, I appreciate you. <laughs> Andy, uh, thank you for bumping up your membership. I love you. Uh, Cami, Chris, Claire, Des Roberts, DJ Rocktopus, <laughs> Ellie, who is also a new member, Ember's New Blues, Aaron, Eric, Farrar, Harley, Jack and Jill, John E, Casey McKenzie, Kalein OK, Caitlin M, Quinn, Lady Kitty Bug, Lex, Alice, Peggy, Rain, Reese, Samar, Shiny, Scarlet, and SMK. Thank you all so much for being a friend. And before I go out to say, thank you for being a friend to my Potato Starch Marxist patrons. And those are AM Angel, Alicia, Amanda, Angelica, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ashley, Ava, Bibi, Beck, Blythe, Bookish Brain Rot, Brie, Brian, Caitlin, Cardinal Ginger, Carlin, Cassandra, Catherine, Kathy, Chris, CJ, Cole, Colleen, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorotea, Ebby, Ember, Emily A, Emily L, Emma, Aaron, Ezra, Hannah C, Hannah T, Harpy Kiro, Haley, Hello there, darling. Ilyanaka, India Inks, JM Tenet, J is on Olympus, JT, Jen Michelle, Jenny G, Jillian, Jojo Bookish, Just Pugsley, Kaylee, Kat, Katie, Katya, Kayala, Kendra, Kylie, Laughing Cat Dog, Laura, Library of Scars, Lisa B, LP, Lou Siri, Luna Moth, Lustful Octopus, Martin, Marcella, Marquita, Maz, Malara, MK Books, Molly, James, Nat, Natalie, Never, Nicole G, Nicole R, Nyan Binary, Paige P, Penny Chilling, Fox Club, Pixel Stars, Piratheon, Rachel B, Rat Sarah, Reba, Rebecca, Ren, Robin, Rosie, Rowan, Other Rowan, Sequoria, Sadie, Samantha, Sarah H, Sarah the Bear, Shamed, Shannon, Shayna, Sheena, Sean, Sophie, Stephanie, Talia, Three Old Dogs, Tina, Toast, Trash Can Teddy, Sev, Valentine, and Writer A. Thank you all so much for being a friend. Mm -hmm.